بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ویری امپارٹنٹ کمپوننٹ آف دی اکنامک پالیسی وی ٹاک اباؤٹ مانیٹری پالیسی وچ ایکچولی ہیز این اوور آرچنگ رول اینڈ دا سیکنڈ ون از دا فزیکل پالیسی سو ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو سی واٹ آر دا ڈفرنٹ ایلیمنٹس اینڈ امپارٹنٹ انگریڈینٹس آف دا فزیکل پالیسی موسٹ آف دا ٹائم وی ہیئر اباؤٹ دی مانیٹری پالیسی بیکاز واٹ ہیپنز از از دیٹ اٹ ہیز اے ڈائریکٹ انفلوئنس on the common man. It directly influences everyone, poor, rich, uh, industrialists, students, uh, educationists, any sector of society. The fiscal policy also has its own implications. It does, has a, it does have an effect on all of us. However, uh, it tends to be a little bit more overarching. It tends to have a more strategic role. We see that uh, after the Great Depression of the 1930s, the importance of the fiscal policy Uh, basically emerged according to Kahini's influence. And now what we see is that the world realized that if we do not want to have a repeat of the Great Depression, then having a uh, positive, constructive, engaging, and uh, well thought out fiscal policies are extremely important at the national, regional, and global level. And therefore, uh, it became mandatory for governments to have a very coherent, Uh, and very well thought of strategic fiscal policies. Now, what we see is, is that these fiscal policies uh, have an influence on changes in government expenditure. And another very important element is uh, that it affects the revenue programs uh, that aim uh, at uh, the different levels of engagement. Uh, and also what we see is, is that uh, the economic stability uh, also emerges from it. And therefore, All of this tends to constitute uh, the fiscal policy. Now, what we see is, is that the government has many heads of expenditure and the major ones are definitely its own expenses, its admin expenses, uh, its, uh, its uh, pay structures, uh, its balance of payments, its uh, return of loans, its interest payments, and, and all of these uh, different areas uh, which are basically called non-development expenses. Then we have The development expenses which are taking place and these development expenses again are different development programs uh, which we see uh, where we see construction of roads, whereby we see, uh, we, we see construction of dams, whereby uh, we see that uh, different facilities are being provided uh, to the common man, where different institutions are being developed. So all of that uh, becomes a part of their development program and then their non-development budget. So all of this together tends to mesh up into the fiscal policy and again to ensure that there is a proper balance in how all of this is done. Uh, what we have seen in the past 20 years is this, uh, that there has, been, uh, a, uh, there has been an explosion of expenses which have taken place, which have basically resulted in us taking uh, huge and massive loans from the international community and the IFIs, and that has contributed towards great pressure on uh, our uh, return of payments and also on uh, payment of interest. So what we see is that We are, now, uh, in a, we are now in a whirlpool whereby we are just moving around and changing our caps and trying to ensure uh, that balance uh, through fiscal policies. And another thing that has emerged is that it's, it's, it's very unfortunate that wrong fiscal policies or incoherent fiscal policies or discontinuing, discontinuing fiscal policies has led uh, to the fact that uh, our governments have, have become hostage to international players like IMF or the World Bank or other uh, IFIs. And that again uh, is uh, a very, very dangerous situation which has emerged. So therefore, the fiscal policy has a very, very important impact on a more strategic context of how governments and nations are moving forward. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about the government expenditure programs, then we have to see that is it expansionary in effect or is it contractionary? And again, How does it become contractionary? When there are a lot of taxes and we see that taxes can be direct or indirect. And again, I will talk about it as you move a little bit forward, that how direct and tax, uh, direct taxes have uh, an impact on our lives. And what we see is, is that the expenditure program of any country is, is expansionary in context, whereby uh, job opportunities are being created, whereby uh, money is uh, given into uh, circulation and things like that. And with more taxes, uh, then definitely, the economy tends to constrict because uh, then uh, everyone uh, comes into the ambit of taxation, be it direct or be it uh, indirect. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
the attainment of full employment is also uh, regarded as a primary objective of fiscal policy. So just like the economic policy, the monetary policy, the fiscal policy also looks at full employment because if there is full employment, then what happens uh, is that we would have a better stability within the country. Uh, there would be a lesser gap between the rich and poor. And another uh, thing that we are looking at is, is that uh, the stability of uh, the general context of the economy, that is also a very, very important thing when we talk about stability of general price levels. And that, again, is to control the inflationary context which is taking place uh, within the economy. And right now, for example, we are seeing at a global level due to post-COVID, uh, this has an upward trend and is causing uh, havoc and problems in nearly every country around the world, especially what we see is the price of petrol going up so high. And with the price of petrol going up, then everything is affected directly or indirectly. In Pakistan, we see that uh, the tax regimen is more indirect. Everything is taxed. Uh, I mean, from food to medicine to clothes to anything that is there, it is taxed. And then there are multiple taxes. Uh, I was just going through uh, the different taxes and I, I saw that we have about 37 indirect taxes, uh, which are uh, here. I mean, it's a long, long list. And then we have direct taxation also. Uh, we are talking about improving that base. Unfortunately, again, in direct taxation, uh, either it is uh, the, the exporters who are di directly taxed or it is the salary class. And, and that is also very bad because we have a very small uh, tax base and that tax base has to increase so that the government can get more revenue. And the, the pressure is released from the salary class or from the exporters. Uh, because what we see is, is that uh, the gray uh, market or the black market exists more in Pakistan rather than the white market. And there's a great need that through proper fiscal policies, the black market and the gray markets are controlled and the white market is brought up so that uh, there can be more balance between the different stakeholders and there are more opportunities created for the citizens at large because without that, there would always be pressure on both internally and externally and that is being seen as very evident how things have swirled out of control and right now we see that we are uh, in this high inflationary uh, context and we really have to emerge out of that. So that tends to affect growth rate also. Uh, definitely, we need to, through fiscal policy, improve the levels of education, technical and organizational skills, and higher rate of capital accumulation in the context of growth with equity, resource mobilization, and income uh, redistribution to reduce income inequalities is also uh, a very important aspect of the fiscal policy. And we have to see that uh, all of this is done uh, through uh, a better uh, inclusive and participatory approach uh, and the different players of fiscal policy uh, do not succumb uh, to personal motivation but they have to look at national uh, motivation, national integration and the fact that a more equitable, uh, equitable context tends to emerge within the nation and there is a benefit for all and it's very important to control expenses and also to reduce the indirect taxes and maybe to improve the uh, increase the direct taxes and increase the tax base so that uh, there is uh, a better cash flow within the government and we can uh, reach out to our balance of payments in a better way and we do not have a default situation like that which has occurred uh, in Sri Lanka and that uh, would basically be through uh, a proper holistic uh, participatory inclusive fiscal policy. So what we basically see is is that income redistribution to reduce income equalities is also a very important byproduct of fiscal policy. But through fiscal policy, it is very important that we achieve full employment. We also ensure that there is lesser, uh, lesser indirect taxes, uh, improve uh, our tax base in a better way. We ensure that there is a control uh, of government expenditure and also the fact that we are able to negotiate uh, with uh, different, uh, dif different finance providers in a better way and that we can attain a higher level uh, of uh, giving back uh, on our, our debt and the loans that we have taken previously. And we tend to minimize the loans in the future and we tend to uh, take them with a better uh, package, with better interest rates, which would then have an overall impact on the betterment of the common man, on the economy and also uh, on the inflationary trends which tend to exist and the overall financial stability of Pakistan. Thank you so much.